Welcome, Isaac here. Today we'll be showing you how to create your own Xanadu cloud account and run a very simple job on some of our hardware on the cloud. Xanadu's Quantum Cloud Platform is a fully managed cloud service offering a platform to use Xanadu's software like Penny Lane and Strawberry Fields and providing direct access to cutting edge photonic quantum processing units. To start the process of getting a Xanadu cloud account, navigate to cloud.xanadu.ai and hit sign up for free at the bottom. Fill out the required information and you should get an account confirmation email very soon. Once you've registered your cloud account, navigate back to cloud.xanadu.ai in a web browser, log in with your user credentials, and this is where you'll land. This is the quantum devices page, where you'll see a list of available hardware for you to run things on. Under the device names like Simulon Gaussian and X801, you'll see an offline or an online status. And to the right is a weekly schedule of days where the device should be available. If you click the API tab, this is where you'll be able to generate an API key for submitting jobs to Xanadu Cloud locally. That being said, this is not required if you're going to create and run code directly on the cloud, which we will do. But if you want to run things outside of Xanadu Cloud on your own laptop or desktop, just click view instructions for more details on how to do that. We're going to run things on the cloud. So how we would get started with that is by clicking Penny Lane and a new browser tab will open with all the available applications that we can run on the cloud, like a Jupyter Notebook, Penny Lane Console, and many more. We're gonna do everything in a Jupyter Notebook, so let's click this. We're going to submit a job to one of the devices that are currently online. So to check which ones are available, we go back to the Xanadu Cloud website, and specifically the Quantum Devices tab to see which devices are online. For this tutorial, we're going to use the X8 device. Our hardware is programmable through using Strawberry Fields. So let's import Strawberry Fields as SF. From Strawberry Fields, we're also going to import a submodule called Ops, which we'll use to gain access to all the available operations that we can put into our program. And one more import statement from strawberryfields.utils will import random interferometer since there will be interferometers in the program that we're about to write. So now we need to get to creating a program to run on a device. And on Strawberry Fields, the way we represent programs is through using the program class. Let's call our program prog, and we call sf.program. And all we need to give sf.program is a number of modes. And since x8 is an eight mode chip, we're gonna just give eight here. And just one more definition before we start getting into the actual operations within our program. There are going to be two interferometers acting on four modes in our program later on. So I'm just going to define a unitary matrix that will allow me to define those interferometer operations. And I'm just gonna call random interferometer like I imported a little earlier. Now to start actually defining the operations in our program, there's a built-in context manager within the program class that we just call with prog.context. And within this context is where we add our operations one per line using the Blackbird syntax. And there's a link in the description below. If you're unfamiliar with what the Blackbird syntax is, there's a great tutorial on our website so you can learn more. We're gonna start our program by adding four operations that initialize our states into two mode squeeze states. This can be done using ops.s2gate, where the first argument in s2gate has to be the squeezing amount. We're just gonna say one for each of the squeezing operations. And we're going to create two mode squeeze states between modes zero and four, one and five, two and six, and three and seven. So for the first operation, this would look like tuple q of zero comma q of four. And with a little bit of video editing magic, I've put in the last three operations that we need to initialize our states into two mode squeeze states between the modes one and five, two and six, and three and seven. Next will be our interferometers. So we call ops.interferometer and give it the unitary that we created above. And this interferometer is going to act on the first four modes. And the next interferometer is going to act on the last four modes. Finally, the last operation will be a photon counting measurement in the FOC basis. So we just call ops.measureFOC, and that's it. Okay, so we've defined what our program is and what operations are in it, but now we actually need to tell our hardware, x8 in this case, to run our program. We can achieve this by defining an engine, eng, and by calling sf.remote engine. And what the remote engine class is, is a quantum program executor engine that provides an interface for running remote jobs. And all we need to do to find one is give it a string associated with the device that we want our program to run on, which is called x8 underscore zero one in our case. Now to actually run our program, which we can basically do at this point, we just call eng dot run. And within this run function, we give it two arguments, the program we want executed that we created called prog and a keyword argument called shots, which means number of measurements 
measurements, and we'll just set this to four for simplicity. And we just let this run. And at the end of it running, we should be able to call results.samples to actually see our FOC basis photon counting measurements. Okay, that finished. And as I said, we just call results.samples to see our actual measurement data from the real device. And there you have it. This is real data from a real quantum computer. Not bad. And that's it. You now have the basic instructions for how to create your own Xanadu cloud account and to execute a given program on our hardware through the cloud user interface. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below or make a post on the Xanadu discussion forum, link in the description for that. If you found this video useful, give us a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe for more quantum programming content from Xanadu. Mm -hmm.